Everton star and Salesau striker Richarlison owes his life to football, in every sense of the word. At age 14, in the dead of the night, he had a gun pointed at his head. The guy pointed the gun at my head. He thought I was a drug dealer trying to steal his distribution point. I was scared. I thought, if he pulls the trigger, I'm dead. But I survived and moved on. The ball he had with him saved Richarlison's life. The same ball he never wanted to let go since he was five. But even before this near-death experience, Richarlison's life was not a bed of roses. His road to stardom and the Salesa was grueling, even for the most resilient. He had to deal with a broken family, fight poverty, and cope with rejection. This is the story of fighting for the right reasons, working and making the wildest of dreams come true. Get prepared for an inspirational journey through the life of Richarlison. Richarlison de Andrade was born in 1997 in Brazil. His hometown was Nava Venecia, situated in the Espirito Santo district, famous for its beaches and petroleum and steel production. But a world-renowned footballer was not on the production capabilities of Nava Venecia, not by a long shot. Instead, this little town of 50,000 people was notorious for its brutal streets, crime, and <laughs> Add to that his family's modest means, it was the infamously perfect recipe for a young kid getting lost in the turf. But even with all this trouble so close and around him, Richarlison was not very distracted, and it was all thanks to football. Richarlison's first contact with the ball was at a very young age, thanks to his father and uncle who both played at a regional level. And playing football was the only fun part of his childhood. So when it was time to play, he forgot everything. Along with his brothers, they used to wait impatiently for their neighbor to mow the grass in his garden so they could take the cut grass and put it in their backyard, just to feel like professional football players. But at the time, that seemed far-fetched even for a dream, and he was just about at the beginning of his uphill boyhood. When he was seven years old, his family broke down. Forced to stay with his mom, Richarlison was afraid of losing football. His mother wasn't into it, and Richarlison feared that she'd never take him to games. On the day they were about to move, he made his first leap of faith. My mom and dad split up, and she was moving out of Nava Venecia. I was on top of the moving truck we were leaving on, and I jumped down and went running to my dad. At age 10, he was living with his mom and two brothers and two sisters. And not surprisingly, he was already enrolled in a football school. Even though it was nine kilometers away from where they lived, Richarlison didn't care. Football, the game I'd played since I was a kid, was all I could think about. Every Monday, I would run nine kilometers to the football school and train. Whether it was in the hot sun or the rain, I didn't want to do anything else. He had a burning desire to become a football player. But life had other hardships to throw in his way. His mom was having a tough time feeding a family of five, so he often found himself helping out the family finances, either by working at a car wash, selling popsicles, making chocolate truffles. He even had to work on his grandfather's farm, which was arduous for an underaged boy. But the idea of being a professional was like a poison, quickly running its course in its veins. And that was a far better poison than the one found in his peers. While children around him were dealing and using he was doing his best to stay away, hanging tight to nothing but football. But somehow, trouble ricocheted its way into Richarlison. He was 14 years old. After a match with his friends, he was going back home. In the pitch black darkness of the night, two guys popped out of nowhere pointing guns at his face and shouting. Scared stiff, Richarlison tried to explain the situation. And once again, the ball he held dear to his heart since forever came to his aid. He showed the ball and told them they were just kids playing football. The two had mistaken him and his friends for d who were trying to sell in their region. That near-death experience put everything into perspective for Richarlison, especially with his relationship with football. Today, it is easier to talk about it, but I was very scared at the time. I thought I was going to die. That made me want to change things, to give my family better conditions. Driven more than ever, Richarlison started working even more. But the following three years, he was running in circles. 17 years old and still playing for the youth team of America Mineiro, Richarlison thought it might be the right time to wake up to reality and leave the dream of becoming a pro behind. During a weekend at his father's place, everything changed. Richarlison and his cousins went fishing in a pond which was private property. They spent the entire day there, but the landlord was not happy at all. 
He scolded his father in front of a group of people. At that moment, something clicked inside my head. I remember telling my Uncle Elton, I will do anything to get a contract at America. I'm going to get my dad out of there. There was one more leap of faith in the destiny of the young man. He went to America MG's trials to become a pro. By that time, he'd already been refused more than 10 times. And this time, he only had the money to buy a one-way ticket. Another negative answer would mean an impossible 600-kilometer walk home. I gave it everything I had that morning, and I got through. If I'd given up after the first no, I wouldn't be where I am. Once a pro, Richarlison's future started to look brighter. In his only season at America, he scored nine goals in 24 matches. What he showcased was more than what could be found on stat sheets. The kid was hungry. Fluminense saw his potential and moved. Then coach of Fluminense, Abel Braga, saw right through it. You could see that he wanted us to understand, football is the answer to my life. This ball, I need to treat it with love. It is my biggest symbol. He would always show that. Another nine goals and 42 matches for Fluminense meant a whole nother level. This time, he was moving to England. So started his journey with coach Marco Silva. First, he moved to Watford to meet him. Silva didn't last long at Watford, but moved to Everton after getting sacked. He was not going to leave his prince, Richarlison, at Watford, of course. In 2018, for a club record fee, he joined the Toffees. And that's when he started to show all his class. In 127 matches for the Toffees, Richarlison scored 44 goals and made 10 assists. The doors of the Seleza opened for him as well. And the moment he found out that he made the squad went viral. Brazil won the Olympic gold medal in Tokyo 2020, thanks in large part to none other than Richarlison, who was the top scorer in the tournament with five goals. Richarlison has the potential to go much further than where he is now. His contract with Everton expires in 2024, and he's been linked to Europe's biggest for a long time, but he's far from feeling any pressure. Que eu levo na tranquilidade, é, trabalhando, porque é, é uma responsabilidade muito grande vestir essas camisas que, que eu passei pelos clubes. E onde eu passei teve pressão, é, mas sempre dei a vida e, e ocorreu tudo certo. Now, in his fifth year in England, Richarlison enjoys life to the fullest and all the benefits that come with stardom. But the young Brazilian can't forget where he came from. I want to be remembered as someone who tried to change things around me for the better. And I think the first step is to expose the wounds and humanize the problems in our communities. Richarlison knows the struggle of the disadvantaged because not long ago, he was among them. He was a single wrong move away from death or from a hasty decision that could lead him to in prison, just like some of his childhood friends. That's why he uses all the power he can harness from popularity to speak up against social injustice raising funds for cancer patients, staging an annual football match in Nava Venezia to raise funds to feed families, visiting sick children in local hospitals on Merseyside. What he does off the pitch mirrors what he does on it. He fights for fundamental values. He does not forget about the unfortunate because he used to be on that side. Everton's number seven is still young and full of unpacked potential. It's up to him where he'll shine next, but one thing is for sure, he'll be there to fight the good fight go right at any obstacle in his way. Maybe he won't get it the first time or the second, but does it really matter as long as you keep grinding? Richarlison's life is the perfect example of never backing down, pushing through, and working relentlessly on your dreams to make them your reality. Whenever you feel down, think about the seven-year-old kid who jumped out of a moving truck, who stayed clear out of trouble no matter the cost, who even cheated death to succeed for the burning desire he had.